forgot to press record. All right, so it looks like everything is in proper working order. So, hey, everyone, welcome back to... It's been a quite a long time. Uh, Song of the Wilds. Uh, let me be Yay. the first... <laughs> Wow, thank you all. Um, well, to be fair, there's only three of us. Uh, yeah, that is I don't true. Know why? Does anybody want to message like Kira? Oh, I tagged yeah. ev I tagged everyone already. Yeah, I don't know what else he can do at this point. That's honestly. True. Let me try again. Oh, the Hemmington's already here. Hi. Hello. Yeah, um, I got some. I got some gifts from her. I want to show off on stream. So. Oh, absolutely. Um, before we get into that, though, uh, hi. For those watching this, be it Twitch or YouTube, my name is Evan. I am the Dungeon Master. This is my homebrew campaign that I'm running with these assholes. <laughs> um, they all thought it was a good idea to play with someone, and what better way for a first-time DM than to make his own homebrew, and not, you know, be a normal one and just do a book module. Um, that being said, though, welcome. This is, this is something we do every ten episodes, where we would, um, essentially we go back in time for a prequel story of, of, of a more original team of Greyblades known as Team Alpha, and uh, today is actually the final session, and I don't know about the rest today of you. Today is also Liam's birthday. Today is also Liam's birthday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, so Leah's gonna be late. Um, I don't know about everybody else. Anywho, um, Sorry. oh, there they are. Oh, there's Josh. Anywho, um, so yeah, this also happens to be the final chapter of Team Alpha's story. After that, all following episodes will be purely of Group D, who we all have come to grow in love with. Know and love, I mean. Um, so unfortunately, it looks like we are going to have a bit of a late start because we're still waiting on a few people. Some people said that they're already late and we're, we still have yet to hear back from Hi, a few others. Yeah. And I dropped my D20. Where did it go? Yeah. Hello. Hi. I miss I you. Said, I miss you. I'm here. That's all we care about. Leah should be here soon. We yep. just got done watching the um, the 1984 Dune because we watched the new one Friday when it came oh, out. Oh, I'm so jealous. We tried to watch it yesterday, but because I was literally running on like four hours of sleep, I passed yeah. the fuck out. So we only got so we only got ten minutes into the movie because <laughs> the uh, because every other time I had to keep the movie paused and basically explain the context of what Dune is. Well, no, but here's the thing: the movie it's still explain, didn't work. the movie explains it very well. Oh, it does. okay. Yeah, I'm I'm yeah. gonna go see it tomorrow as part of my birthday weekend. So uh, yeah, and I mean, and part of the reason why it's two hours and thirty minutes and everything is because they only go halfway through the book right they're doing oh, okay. two parts right they're doing two they're they're planning on doing two parts depending upon how well it does in the box office. i think the movie actually did okay this weekend I, from what i, I read thought, yeah and I, I, mean, I think they said it actually performed reasonably considering it's a denny villeneuve movie when his movies tend to not do very well so well, and that and they did a dual uh dual um promotion deal where like it came out on hbo max the right. same day it came out in theaters so um but i mean they from what i because i've read the books years i read the book years ago and i just we just like i said leah and i just watched the 1984 one where that frank herbert the author actually got to see that before he died Oh, and wow, his only complaint that. about the 1984 movie was that they they left out one scene he wished they did. Otherwise, he he approved of it. Um, and I mean, comparing the 1984 movie to this one, I mean, yeah, they did pretty much cut it halfway through, 
right. but I mean, with slight differences here and there, I thought they actually they did very well, and the casting was superb. It's like adapting Lord of the Rings, you know. You get you got to take what you can, you know, and yeah. you got to leave what you you have oh, to. Oh yeah, and I think that's part of the reason why they're doing a two parter for this, right? Is because they want to be able to stay as true to the books as they can, and um, I mean they. I think what they did was for one character they did a gender swap, but it was but it was like it it made sense mm. and for how they did the movie and honestly it didn't take anything away from it. I thought they still did a superb job. The casting was phenomenal. The graphics were amazing. I thought Yeah, De- Denny Villeneuve is a master of like special effect like vision. Oh, yeah. I'm really no, excited and they, and to see it. Superb. Oh, by the way, uh, we just got a hundred bits by our friend Ruben. So thank, thank you, you Ruben. We love you. Thank oh, you, by the way, and I will show this to you when I surprise everybody with, with my with my outfit. But um, your sticker, um, vote Oswald Cobblepot for mirror is my new sticker on my phone since my Bubba sticker tragically fell off. Oh is no! It... Not the I know I need sticker. to get a new one, and I'm gonna put it on my laptop so I have it forever. By the way, <laughs> how awesome does the Batman look? Oh my god! Oh, it looks great. <laughs> can we talk about it Zoe does look good. And can, can you believe that's it? Colin Farrell? Right. No. Like, holy shit! Like, can I, I love Colin for Farrell. Like one second, and just say how hot Zoe Kravitz looks as Catwoman. She does. Oh she my does god! <laughs> my, my, I. The only thing I will hold judgment on until I see the movie really is how well Robert Pattinson does as Batman. I he think he's going to nail it. I'm personally, I, I, think, I, I think personality oh, yeah. wise he can, but like, I, I just want to see how he does it because like, yeah. for like, like for me personally, I thought that like every bat, every person that's played Batman for in some way has done well in some form, except for, I will never claim George Clooney's Batman. Even George Clooney doesn't claim himself as Batman. He was but, fun as a campy Batman, honestly. Of, but, of all the things I, I hate about that movie, he's not one of them, honestly. <laughs> but, I, I I can't I can't the only the only thing I can't complain about that movie is Jim Carrey as the movie. Yeah, and, like he was and, fucking No, that 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 one was when Val was, Kilmer was Batman. Yeah, that was Batman Forever. Jo- Batman George Clo- yeah, George Clooney was Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze. Yeah, but yeah. I, see, I love that movie purely for the fact that everybody just looked like they were having a fucking blast. Yeah, I like Batman yeah, Forever I, I, more I, I, than I like Batman Returns. Apparently, like pretty much everyone in that movie doesn't claim they're in. Yeah. <laughs> it's still fun. It still looks like they Schwarzenegger had fun. seemed like he was having a good time, but you know. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can yes. hear you. Okay. Um, Let's see, can I turn like up your I, I responded okay, to when you said Zoe Kravitz looks hot. Well, no, yeah. it just <laughs> it just felt like I was getting talked over a lot. So I was like, yeah. oh, no, sure, no, we all heard you. We all acknowledged. It's but, a fucking um, lag. I'm sorry. But uh, I, while I was on vacation, I saw uh, Venom: Let There Be Carnage, and I saw No Time to Die. Oh, so, uh, I still got to see No Time to Die. I I still oh. haven't seen the other movies. Like the, old, hey, the only like new movie I've seen so far really has been um, was Dune because because I didn't want to spend the the outrageous amount of money yeah. for, for 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 Disney Plus movies and stuff like <laughs> lately and I just recently saw Black Widow and just recently saw Raya the Last Dragon because we did not want to pay the thirty. Raya the Last dollars. Dragon was actually fantastic. It I was. haven't it seen it yet. So good. Yes, it was. I um, actually, I actually kind of cried at the end of No Time to Die. Not to spoil anything, but Cruella was not as bad as everybody said it was. I finally watched it because I didn't want to pay for it because I heard it was fucking garbage. But <laughs> it wasn't that bad. They're making it, a second one. It I heard. wasn't. Yeah. No, it wasn't that bad. Like it wasn't wow, but it wasn't that bad. Yeah. I still haven't seen it. You know what's funny? I watched Venom, uh, like most of Venom, after I watched. Venom Let There Be Carnage because I had never seen the first one before. I kind of like the first one more. <laughs> oh no, I will agree with that. That's the one complaint I have of Evan was that the there was really no stakes. Yeah, it just the Venom the first one was easier to follow. Like the story felt less that. complex or, or just it felt more like they were were explaining what was going on and Venom Let There Be Carnage was just kind of all over the place plot wise. I I love Shriek. Like she's one of my yeah. favorite villains, so I liked it. 
um, purely for that reason. But no, I will agree with you. It was all over the place. Yeah. So, yeah, I still haven't seen either one. So I, that's I mean, Carter is just kind of just chaotic. So yeah, he, I, yeah. as a he's character, me. he's yeah. me. If you turn, <laughs> Car Car Carnage, Carnage is like the whole point of Carnage is to be pretty much chaotic Venom was the mm -hmm. whole point, and then right, and then Carnage's child, and then Carnage's child is is an interesting one too when that eventually comes about. Toxin, mm -hmm. yeah. Not c kind of a spoiler, but um, they kind of tease Toxin at the end of the movie. Yeah. So, I mean. Um. So everybody's here. So I think it's time I revealed something to you guys. Wait, hold on. Before um, you do that, before you do that, okay. uh, Jordan, Kira, are you guys there? No. Yes. Hello. Hello. The video will get there. Okay. Okay. And Izzy, are you still there? Yes, I am cooking. All right, everyone's checked in. Carly, you may now reveal yourself. You may now expose yourself. <laughs> I shall <laughs> now expose Whoa. my... <laughs> Look at that. Oh, That's great. And Nanda has I come to it. life. I had ears um, and antlers. I lost the antlers, and the ears didn't fit me. <laughs> so... You guys are getting earless and on a but also hold on we're gonna do something super quick everybody one two three happy, happy birthday, birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday dear leah this is so uncoordinated <laughs> Happy birthday, birthday to you! Now what? Yay! Yeah. Not terrible. Yay! Now, <laughs> now blow it. Man, if I had a nickel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't have any. All right. Honey, it's a candle. All right. Well, guys, uh, for those of you watching, now that we have a full <laughs> cast here today, thank you for joining us for Chapter 50 halfway to a hundred of Song of the Wilds and the final chapter of of Team Alpha story. Uh, just a couple things. Uh, first off, we apologize for the late start. A lot of people were had to finish some last minute stuff, but we're all here now. Um, just a couple mini announcements. If you haven't noticed, um, obviously we're starting on a different time at a different day. Um, instead of the typical Sunday, 7 p.m. Central Time, we are now, uh, hopefully for just tonight, uh, Saturday, 8 p.m. Central Time. This just happened to be the one day that people were available for this time. And it's a shocker, because this is the first time we've ever played Song of the Wilds on a different day of the week. So, took 50... I have to move things around, because I'm I'm sorry! <laughs> take full responsibility for that because I got a new job so my schedule is a little chaotic since it's no longer your job is full of dicks because they do, they schedule one week at a time and they don't tell your, your schedule until the end of the current week they well, will, I mean that's typical retail <laughs> well, my job's a little better at that but. technically it's supposed to be put out on Thursday before 10 a.m. But a lot of shit happened this week. It's a long story. Yeah. So it just got pushed back, which isn't that big a deal, but hopefully we'll see. Um, <laughs> that, that, that reminds me of back when I worked retail. And it was like, there's like weeks where like my, my old manager was good at that. And then there were weeks where it was literally the, the evening before. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I have off Wednesday, so I can do yours, yours way of the wayward. Yeah. Bane of the wayward. Bane Fuck, of the wayward. Why am I so hard at that? Which, <laughs> I got my shirt hey. on. Red Panda Owlbear. Are you um, on the table? On, that, on that note, I would also like to announce um, a second campaign that is that is going to be making its rounds 
um, on my Twitch channel here, I have decided that even though I may not be that experienced of a DM, I'm going to definitely run the risk and experiment by playing a second campaign. Overall, the second campaign is going to be a lot easier because it's not 100% a homebrew. It is only partially homebrew, whereas the other half is... It's not a, it's not an actual module, module, but it's based off of one of my favorite video games. Um, yeah, no. Like if you... And I can say this because the only person who knows what the game is is Carly because she's the only other person in Song of the Wilds who actually asked to be part of the Great Poison. None of you fuckers wanted to join. None of you DM'd me about it. Hey, hey, I have a, I have, I have, I have a lot going on. I mean, is. <laughs> I mean, if there's still an opening, I, I'm... Unfortunately, fine. there isn't. We got. Okay. We have a full crew of five. Um, I however, have a thing of first base pirate, so I jumped on that. Show. How, uh, I just kind of that would have been, been perfect that. for me. I should have jumped in. Though. Um, however, that being said, like I said, this is a partial homebrew. It's based off of one of my favorite video games. I'm not going to say which one, but the Great Poison is based off of a is based off of one of the games of the Metroid series. Oh, um, yeah. not not Dread, not Dread. That is that's low hanging fruit. I was going to uh, say, is it Rogue Galaxy? But, I don't know. Rogue Galaxy? Yeah. Oh, thought... that PS2 game. Yeah. That, which is actually quite fun. Yeah, no, I, I got, like, 25% into it, but I was still a kid, so playing a game like that was a little too dense for me. Yeah, understandable. So, uh, but, no, this is specifically based off of, me of a certain Metroid game. Um, but, yeah, that's what the campaign's based off of. Now, I will open up to other announcements from other people. I just need to step away for just one moment. So, Carly, take the reins to conduct who can announce, who can do their announcements. Well, I'll go first then, because I just have one. So, as I was saying, I got a new job, and I am now a manager at AutoZone. Really? Yeah, it's super fun. I learned how to... I did it myself actually which i was kind of proud of i changed my first car battery today nice super fun i was really scared that i was gonna mess up the car but it was actually really easy i was gonna say i could be wrong but didn't you like just get your license or something or... <laughs> that's a long story okay. i was supposed to but the dmv right now is shit oh okay so it's really difficult for me to make an appointment <laughs> fair enough um does anybody else have any announcements uh, uh, Go ahead, Joshua. So on Mondays, I will be doing my Twitch stream, and I will be interviewing other DMs, and also be host facilitating a Q and A of D and D DMs on Mondays for people that who can who want to hop in and ask questions of DMs, anything that you've ever wanted to know about D and D, or you want to inquire about D and D. Um, <clears throat> we. I'll have DMs of all different experience levels and things like that on Mondays. Um, I am looking to find someone to fill in on this Monday, but um, I'm sure I will find someone for this upcoming Monday. But our own DM here, Evan, will be one of my one of my people on Mondays. I also have in the future. I am working with right now. I'm working with. Um, Sir Pfeffers from TikTok Yay! to he he's really excited about doing it and we're figuring out a good day for him to do it. Um Crippled Ninja from TikTok is also down to do it and he DMs a DD session, so he'll be joining as well. Um I am having on I'm looking at my list here. I have where did he go? I just had his thing up. Where did you go? Um, oh, Natural Geekery from TikTok will also be joining me on Mondays. Um, our good friend Pharaoh Heba will be joining me as well at, at some point. And so I am getting people signed up and you know I'm sure I'll have repeats as well, but basically any DM of any any experience level people can come in and ask us questions and i want to have as of as variety of the types of dms as possible so you can so people can get tips and tricks from all different experiences and types of dms so 
Speaking of um, experience level, I actually have another announcement, but I will let Evan tell this one. About next Sunday. Oh! <laughs> um, uh, next Sunday, we will be we will be playing, but it will not be Song of the Wilds. It will be a special Halloween one-shot, and it will be the Dungeon Master debut of Carly. Yeah, I'm going to destroy each and every one of you. <laughs> Sorry, we're all playing this, right, or something? Yes, it's going to be the entire Song of the Wilds crew, okay. but it's not Song of the Wilds. All right. I am going I will, to try my I hardest to be there on time. Yeah. I'm oh, going to try good. to be there I on time. You... I'm going to try. Thank you. <laughs> I want you all to be your characters. So I'm going to tell you. I'm going to try to be there. Um, I, for my birthday, I got tickets to go to the Seahawks game that day. So That's awesome. I know so many people going to football games. <laughs> well, can you imagine people showing up to see to like football games in costume? No, that'd be fun as hell. Like, I yeah. totally get it. I just think it's so funny that it's like, really? On Halloween? But then I think about it, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, yeah. totally. So, so it, it, yeah, it, it, so it, it will depend upon either me being able to hop on Zoom while driving back from the game or if I get home at that time. So it will all be dependent upon that. But I'm going to do my very best. I appreciate you. And by the way, uh, Josh, in regards to the message that you sent me, um, apologies for not looking at it sooner, but I quickly did a look over it while everyone was doing their announcements. So far, I haven't really seen anything that needs to be changed so far. Well, I haven't really touched it since last time, so like that's it's really that that's totally like if it, if you liked it last time, you should this time. That's a, that's totally fine. Then yeah, that is a very good point. Uh, things might change once we encounter once we encounter this. Mm hmm. Um, mm -hmm. it more presently. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, that being said, that being said, though, I am sending you a follow up message just to keep you abreast of of this session. Which, by the way, um, as you again, as you may have noticed, we're starting a little bit later. Um, so yeah, apologies for that. A couple changes, though. Unlike t unlike usually, we will not be having a break time this episode like we typically do. So hopefully everyone's got their snacks and whatnot right now. Um, however, because we're not taking a break, we should still be able to end our typical time. Maybe a little bit later. Is This is a Saturday and tomorrow's still a weekend, so maybe things might be just a little bit freer for some people. I'm not sure. We'll see how this goes. Um, that being said, though... Um, are there any other little announcements for it? Yes, Liam. Uh, I just wanted to show off what my mom got me for, uh, for my birthday. Yes, this please. pretty fun yeah. stuff. Uh, she got me a speed bag for me to, uh, oh. with, which is pretty fun, along with some gloves. That's pretty cool. Nice! And, um, I got a Nintendo Switch, uh, Pro Controller, so that'll nice. be fun to play with. And uh, on that subject, I al she also got me an Elgato, which means I should be able to stream Switch games now on Twitch. Nice. So that's that'll awesome. be a lot of fun. So that's it. Yep. All right. Awesome. We can't wait to see those. Um, all right. With that being said, are there any other little announcements? Uh, oh, one more. Just one tiny one. Uh, yes? Um... If anyone wants Song of the Wild merch, you can always go to one of our two merch stores. The one I run is merch.streamelements.com slash josh underscore da underscore human. And you can help support us and keep this stream going and all that fun stuff based off supporting us through that merch store. And then I believe that our lovely Izzy also has a merch store that has other Song of the Wild merch upon it as well. Yeah, Izzy, you hear that? <laughs> yes, sorry, I just got up here from my laundry. I finished my task for the night. I am ready to play. Sweet. All right. 
And Kira, Jordan, are you guys okay? Because I see we see you, Kira, but we don't see Jordan. Where's Jordan? There. I'm I'm here. It's just my <laughs> laptop doesn't have a wide angle. His laptop is not as fancy as mine. <laughs> So instead, the player will be the unpainted wall. No, there's a snake. There's a snake in the case. It's a, 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 a snake. A, a danger noodle. A, a, da a, no a noodle. A nope rope <laughs> is the player. Can I see you, Kara? I, I will also say, Carly, since the game is at 1 o'clock yeah. next Sunday, I should be able to... My, the football game. I'm the doing. football oh, game, Carly. I got really oh, confused. The football game. The tickets. It says it's at one. Yeah. So I and the games generally oh, go yeah. for about two hours. So I should be able to. Oh, cool. So um, I'll, I'll DM you because we might be able to. It might it might be a little easier than you think. So her her colors are not as vibrant because she's in blue. Mm. She's no shit. I want to see the sneak. Let us see the nope rope. I want to see the baby. <laughs> I love snakes. I, I, I actually, I actually really hate snakes. So this is the only way that I'll appreciate it. Fun fact for you: I actually used to play with snakes. Oh, she's so pretty. Every once in a while, we would get garter snakes in my mom's garden, and I was the one that would go and take them out because you just pick them up. They're friendly. Yes. Walk him over to the forest preserve because we lived in the woods. It's pretty. He's really nice. I like how he just curls. Oh yeah. A gentle boy. All right. <laughs> I'll just stand what? here. And then she just said, "Let's change the subject." <laughs> I can't. So so yeah. So let me can we can start just, with our DM and me as the the assistant to the DM saying. this session. I mean, what? Don't don't worry about it, fam. It's I'm a, I'm so sketched out. I have no idea. And, Evan has told me jack shit, so I'm like, I'm so scared. <laughs> uh, don't worry, don't worry about me. I'll just, I'll just keep to new planning my my secret Metroid game. It's gonna be real prime time. I mean, yeah. what? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> you. I'm don't gonna mind. tell everyone. No, I'm kidding. No, don't, don't mind me. I'll, I'll just continue to DM what? Evan and oh, secretly oh, plot. No. I mean, what? You're. Are, <laughs> are, are, are you implying, Evan, that you're other DM? <laughs> I knew you guys were secret lovers. Uh, other other DM other DM other M other M M <laughs> and, and you know like when you have two DMs it's a, it's a real mixture of ideas it's a real fusion of talents exactly yeah <laughs> We're, but anyway, let's go. Let's get on with this story. It's gonna be a real super Santa time. Returns. Anyway, <laughs> it's gonna be a super time. Who is excited for the one shot of Davina and Arius's wedding in the far distant future? Because I know I am. <laughs> I mean, technically, in my campaign, they're already married. I mean, what? Uh, yeah, that's totally <laughs> fair. That was weird. And I and I can't wait to and I can't wait to write out the orc wedding between you guys in Archivist. I'm so fucking excited about that. You have no idea. We just have to we just have to get there. We're not going to spend a lot of time out in the fields. Uh, anywho, uh, so anyway, I'm super excited because we're going to be testing out a new music system, which would hopefully make things a lot clearer, and I no longer have to use my my Bluetooth speaker next to my microphone. So, that being said. Let us continue with The Song of the Wilds, Chapter Frickin' 50, Yay! Team Alpha Finale. Baby boy. <laughs> hmm. Can you guys hear this? Oh, yeah. S sweet. <laughs> Where we last left off, our group of intrepid hunter-warriors simply known as Alpha, after tireless trials, after so many fights, after so many close shaves with death, put the cat down, Josh, there will be no distractions. It's a... He's like, nope. 
There'll be no distractions. Two, two snakes. Put down the snake and put down the note rope. You, you can't, not, you can't hit me from anything. there, Evan. <laughs> Open window. <laughs> All of a sudden, Josh just like trying to hit me in the head. Holy shit! How did you do that? <laughs> Uh, Team Alpha, after many trials and tribulations, has finally, once again, encountered in her special little flowery clearing, the goddess of nature, Persera herself. She, however, has divulged to them that this entire war against nature was not only her doing, but she apparently has some hidden purpose that gives her motivation to fight against the forces of civilization. She then went on about some things about how this is the second time that it's gone on. That there have been already an old world, an old home that was ransacked and just lost. And that this was a second chance. And that now this second chance has been ruined. And it is time for Pusera to finally take back what is rightfully hers. And it is here dear viewers that we finally begin chapter 50 of team alpha with that all being said team alpha your way is blocked you're in the middle of a clearing and you once again face persera herself who quite literally towers above you a feminine figure of autumn leaves deer antlers and a massive gnarled staff she stands almost like she's 12 feet tall and she has a look of absolute apathy at that moment you see a shadow above you as there seems to be a hulking figure up in the treetops of the one lone tree in this clearing you hear a roar and then boom it's landing right next to Persera herself you recognize this enigmatic figure as Beastmaster. <laughs> <laughs> and with that said, I would like you all to roll initiative. Uh, alright. And while you guys roll initiative, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Typically, I'm always the one to call out who's next. However, it, while I do that, I'm also going to be saying who is on deck. When I say who is on deck, that means you're the next person to go. So when I say you're on deck, you better stop what you're fucking doing, and you better start planning your turn. Because we waste a lot of time in these fights. Let's actually try to bring in some efficiency. Scheiße! If I get another roll like that, I'm losing my dice. And just adding things, because that was a really bad roll. What did you roll? Wait, there's two. So Leah got a two. No, I got a three. A three. Yeah, so I'm going last. Hi. We're good. Kira, what did you get? I got an eight. two. Just a two. Kira got a straight two. Really? All right. I'm, I'm going to go around the table here. Um, Liam, what did you get? Uh, I just rolled a 23. Nice. Hey, well, at least I'm something. Okay. Liam got a 23. Uh, Beastmaster, what did you get? Got a 14, good sir. Okay, Josh got a 14. Uh, Leah got a 3. Kira got a 2. Um, Jordan, what did you get? Ocho. Yeah, 8. Jordan got an 8. Carly, what did you get? I got an 18, sir. Well, at least I'm a hard table. All right. And then lastly, Izzy, what did you get? I got a six. All right. I got a rock. I got a rock. <laughs> I got it. a jar of dirt. I've got a jar of dirt. <laughs> and you so don't know what it's about yet. Oh, Wait, what? God. All right. So that being said, Team Alpha, you as a group collectively face both Beastmaster and the goddess of nature, Persera herself. Liam, you are first. Carly, you're on deck. Okay. I would like to try to seduce Persera. <laughs> I mean, hey, what, why not? You may certainly try. 
Alright, I'd like to read her romantic poetry. Basically. Oh my god, that's adorable. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Hold on. I have music for this. Oh boy. <laughs> because now that I can because now that I'm able to do this, I can I can just play whatever music I want. I oh. woo thee on a spring a spring evening's night. Alright, are you ready, Liam? Yes. What should I roll for this? Of course. Really? Okay. You're gonna get DCMA, dude. <laughs> okay, you know what? I shouldn't. You're right. Yeah. Um, uh, what should I roll for this? Okay, well, it depends on how you're planning to seduce her. Since you're going to read her poetry, then this would be a... Performance, right? You know what? You are right. If you're gonna be reading her yes. poetry, it is gonna be performance. All right. You know why I'm happy about that? Because my bonus for performance is plus 11. <laughs> oh my god. Well, all right, go. Okay. Right. Wish me luck, guys. Wait, don't roll just yet, dude. What? Why? 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 Read me some poetry. Yeah. Oh, okay. And that, and and depending on how well you read it, I might give you advantage. Okay. <laughs> Well, I have to say, as a DM, my favorite thing is when they act it out first, and even it though it, like it kills, like it's awesome, right. it fails. <laughs> Funny, I gave you. <laughs> so, as, as the famous quote of the spy from Team Fortress Two, "Seduce me." All right. Mm. Poem for yeah. my love by June Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> How do we come to be here next to each other in the night? Ooh. <laughs> Where are the stars that show us our love inevitable? Outside the leaves flame usual in darkness and in rain. Falls cool and blessed on the holy flesh. The black men waiting on the corner for a womanly mirage. I am amazed by peace. It is this possibility of you asleep and breathing in the quiet air. Wow. I started off and it got real creepy for me there at the end. <laughs> um, this isn't for you, Beastmaster. <laughs> I'm just imagining like, some guy just looking over a woman sleeping. Just... <laughs> you, you know what? Because... I assume they're already together in this poem. I think that's the implication. Oh, okay. But you know what i will say you know what because i've actually never heard that poem before and i actually do kind of dig it all around you know what i am going to give you advantage so roll me a performance check with advantage okay well the first one i rolled was a 14 so yeah. let's see what the next one is oh shit that's a 30 god damn um <laughs> you i just destroyed the song of the wild's lore didn't i <laughs> You never know, man. Never know. Uh, Pissarra just... Pissarra just beheads Beastmaster and makes yeah. Bren the new Beastmaster. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, no. Um... <laughs> you're, Bren, as you look at Pissarra, you're not quite sure if it worked or not. You really put your all in reading that poem, and Pissarra just kind of, like, holds her staff and just goes... She, she, she doesn't seem enthused by it, but she doesn't seem like she's rejecting it. If anything, okay. she, it looks like she's just processing what just happened. Okay. Um, you got a shot. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance. So you're saying there's a you chance. You shot your shot. <laughs> uh, but you shot your shot. Are you doing anything else this turn? Uh, probably not. <laughs> All right, uh, Carly, you're up next. Jo uh, Beastmaster, you're on deck. Alrighty. So because I don't, I don't think that she would attack her based on the fact that she loves nature. So it's almost kind of like a senpai type moment. <laughs> one of you is trying to fuck the goddess the other one looks up to the goddess as like the student council president you're the worst team alpha hey my thing almost worked you don't know if it worked or not it, she's just loading right now because I'm 
still like kind of a little bit like this might be a risk. I'm going to have Evan, you have to roll, um, make a wisdom saving throw and beat 17. Beat 17? All right. Wait, so what are you doing to her? Sorry. I'm hold. Sorry, I thought I said that. That's my bad. I'm sorry. I woke up today at five o'clock. Um, yeah, I'm going to cast whole person. Okay. And what's the DC again? 17. Okay. Unfortunately, she rolled a 22. That's Ouch. fine. I figured. All right. You I'm see, you see your vine, you see your vines as you try to, your whole person, it's just like any other whole person spell, but in your case, it looks very naturey, and it looks like vines just shoot out of the ground and are shooting at her to restrict her, but all she does is just this. And the vines just fall limp before her before they can even touch her. It was worth a shot. All are, right. Are you doing anything else? Um, I am going to, hold on, use, because I can't remember what it's called, so I apologize. Um, a minute, a minute, a minute, a minute. um, speech of the beast and leaf, and I'm going to listen and see if I can gauge any, like, danger from the plants around me. Oh. I'm going to talk to the tree. All right. You are the Lorax. <laughs> <laughs> I speak for the tree. And for I, some reason, they're speaking Vietnamese. <laughs> um, is that all? I am the Snorlax. So I speak for the. Yeah. Snorlax. So do I? Do I hear anything from them? Um, roll me a perception check. Okay. And actually, you know what? Because you're using a spell to kind of it's give not you a spell, it has to do with my with my race. Oh. Then give me a per give me a perception check, but add your proficiency because you're using your perception in a very naturey way. Wait, when did I add that anyway? Oh, I'm sorry. My it's been a it's been a while. My proficiency. Um... Is it enterprising young men? Wait, Evan. I'm really sorry. Hun Where is that? You're oh, it's five. I got a 21. Okay. You hear an absolute deafening chorus from every flower, every tree, every blade of grass. They are all speaking in unison. Die. 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 Um, I can tell you need some time. It's the it's happening. Okay. <laughs> and I just make a step back, and I just don't say anything, and I just put my hands behind my back. Okay. Uh, Beastmaster, you're up. <laughs> I would like to rage. <laughs> Some, and when Some I rage... assholes trying to steal my woman. <laughs> well, well, when I rage, um, ODM... Oh, are there six willing creatures around me? Unfortunately, no. It is just you, the goddess, oh and Team Alpha. There are that no other bad. animals in this clearing. That's too bad because I could call upon six willing creatures to aid us in battle, but that's okay. Um, I mean, there might be a couple and, birds, just like a couple sparrows some, flying some, around. Some pissed off pigeons that could come and fight. <laughs> could, 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 could they be hawks? That should be cool. Now, unfortunately, there are no other animals in this place. That's how I designed it. It is strictly between you two and the team. That's perfect. And Bre Brennan says this in character, some Beastmaster you turned out to be. Brennan, maybe, yeah, then I'm maybe, DM maybe, you. maybe, 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 Grows like another like two feet in like muscle mass and height. 
along with this and gains claws while he holds his axe. Okay, he so helps. Beastmaster turns into Bear Hulk. Bear Hulk, essentially, yeah. Mad Bear Pig. Bear Pig. <laughs> yeah, Mad Bear Pig. It's yeah, I'm sorry, Man Bear Pig. It's super serial, guys. It is super serial, because then he looks at Bren, and since the goddess told him that Bren dies first, he is going to attack Bren with his great axe. His or I believe he renamed it the Axe of Nature or something like that. So, um, let's see here. By the way, for some reason, I'm st only at 24 hit points right now. Is that oh, no. bad? <laughs> I feel like that's if I knew that, I would have healed you! Uh, all, all of you, all of you take take a long rest, just to be like, nothing bad happened, just, yeah, take a long rest. Alright. Was that 29 hit? Uh, click your character icon. That was a 29 hit? Okay. 29 to hit. I'm just, I'm, I don't have your, I don't have access to you guys' campaign, so I don't know your guys' uh, ACs. Okay, well, my AC is 11. <laughs> okay. So. Um. So, um. So that will be 18 damage to start off with. However, since I am in rage, I also have infectious fury. So, when I hit you with a melee attack while I'm in rage, you need to succeed in a wisdom saving throw. Um, and then, um, Evan, could you look at the at the character sheet and help me with figuring this out? Because it doesn't tell me what the... What am I looking at? My infectious fury under my actions. Um, I'm trying to. It doesn't straight up say what the, what the um, the to the saving DC needs to be. Infectious fury. When... Yeah, I'm just looking at the math for it. Okay, it when you hit a creature with your natural weapon while you're raging, the target must succeed on a Wisdom saving throw DC 20. DC 20. Okay. Or, or suffer oh, one of the. F it's a... Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Side question. Is Liam's character within ten feet of me? Well, you, you, all, all of the team is like bunched up together. Mm -hmm. He gets a plus five sa on saves. Okay. okay. So and you need plus to, five you need to roll, uh, roll Liam. Oh yeah. So wisdom saving throw, you got to be twenty. And I got to be twenty. All right. Yes. Uh, seventeen. So. Okay. So but did you, you add the take... plus five? Five. Yeah, I, I added the five. Okay, okay. <laughs> Damn. So cool. you get 15 extra seconds. Okay. So what was that all together? So, okay. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me go back. 33? Yeah. Let me look at 33. My... Yeah. Okay. I believe so. That's a chunk. And then that, since I took... That was, those would be my two actions. I continue to sit, stand next to the goddess then and end my turn. All right. Next up is the goddess, and Jordan, you're on deck. Okay. The goddess is now going to look at both Anana and Aura. Hi. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> I'm not doing the voice tonight. I'm sorry, because I've just been coughing all day. That's fair. <laughs> Completely fair. As someone that's been getting over her cold himself, I get it. The <laughs> last thing I have is my cough. <laughs> um, she is going to take one action, and you see, th and you see, the goddess take her staff, and she taps it th twice into the ground. And you see what looks like two bright blue seeds kind of poke out of the ground and launch at both of you. I need you... Yes? Dispel magic. This is a... Okay, which one do you dispel? You pick one of them. Well, I'm gonna do it for Inanna. All right. All right, so... Uh, ninth level. Or 8th level. Alright. Awesome. Inanna, you're safe. Aura, 
I need you to make me a wisdom saving throw. One more. Add plus five. If you're within ten feet of me. Yeah. I need a... Is that wisdom, right? Yeah. Wisdom, wisdom yes. Throw. Wisdom saving throw. And 12. 17. 17? 17. Unfortunately, that's not enough. Aura, uh, you feel that seed hit you just straight in the chest, and it almost instantly blossoms into a bright blue flower. And at, uh, no, not an aura. No, no, aura. Um, yeah. Aura, you see the flower bloom, and you instantly feel like it just sucked something away from you. Um, aura. What was the again? What was the spell level of that cancel? Eight. Okay, that flower took away one of your spell slots of at eighth level. I already had it. So ha. So you don't have another one. I don't have another one. Just one. I only had one. All right. She is then going to take her second action, and this time she's going to look at. She's going to look at Luana. <laughs> oh, buddy. No, 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 no. <laughs> she then, like, raises her staff and just points it right at her. And Inanna, you feel a gust of wind slowly form around you in what feels like a spike. Sp <laughs> 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 Is this my shield? What did I say? Wait. Who's watching? <laughs> and. Inanna, I need you to make an athletics saving throw. Or Luana, I mean, sorry. No Ola, Inanna, Luana, I hate all of you. Five? Okay, I think we're Oh yeah, Morgan's the only one that actually has like a name that doesn't end with an A. And Bren. That's yeah, Bren and Morgan. Wrong. And Fenra. I was, so, I was talking uh, more about like the girls, but yeah. Okay. Funny. Evan, which one did you say? An athletics saving throw. Okay, it is a 22. All right, you actually just made the DC for this, so you're only going to take half damage. Um, basically, Goddess Persera used Razor Leaf. <laughs> it's highly effective. You find yourself surrounded in a small cyclone as just... Hundreds upon hundreds of lo what look like maple leaves just start flying around you, and you realize they're actually slicing at your skin. Um, because you make the because you make the DC, you're only going to take all right. You only take eight points of slashing damage from that. Perfect. All right. Uh, Jordan, you're up. Izzy, you're on deck. So, Izzy, start working on your turn while Jordan does his. I look at the goddess. I don't say anything. I walk forward. I squash a flower. I just step on it and I grind it into the ground and I cast... Oh, and I cast Banishment at fourth level. <laughs> oh, shit. I need a whiz... I need, I, don't, I, need a, I need a charisma... 18 saving throw from the goddess. Oh. Ooh, 18. She'll probably pass it, but I want to try it. While it is not natural, it is a dirty 20. Son of a gun. All right. Uh, you dirty, we... dirty girl. <laughs> You're a dirty oh, bird. bird. <laughs> um, bonus action. That's one of my favorite Leah quotes. It's right up there with, We also have a logger! Or one of my favorites, I always get thirsty at night. <laughs> <laughs> Legitimately was told, you know how you get so much in one mindset of a character that you're writing for? I oh, was completely in I heard. Mindset. It doesn't make it any less, if, if anything, that makes it more funny. <laughs> I don't think I have anything for a bonus action, so I'd like to... I, I guess I'll stay where I am, and I'll just look a little angry, and I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep smushing that flower. Oh, you're, you're just grinding it underneath your foot like a, like a cigarette. 
Um. All right. So, with that being said, uh, Izzy, it is now your turn. Leah, you're on deck. All right. So, this is what. Oh my god, my hair. This is what um, Luana is going to do. She is first going to cast. Um, bear with me. We are going to cast Mage Hand. Um, which me and I can do it without actually saying anything, um, because of my abilities. Anyway, so I'm casting Mage Hand, and I would like my hand to come in close proximity to her and start doing um, like like hand pump. Wait, where are you doing these hand puppets? I, I cast Mage Hand. It's a hand becomes visible. Okay, so what are you trying to do with this? What's the goal? Um, there is a goal that I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> You'll know. <laughs> You'll know what happens. I would like it to go up to, um, go up to them and kind of like distract them in the sense of it is the puppet. Okay. Um, make a performance check. Fantastic. You seduce the spider. I seduce the spider. I got a 26. Um, okay. Because <laughs> I honestly didn't expect this. Um,. Hand puppets. It's like doing one of those things, like, you know what, like, you can make, like, they're, they're trying to do shadow puppets, but it's just the hand. Alright. <laughs> we will we will find out later if that worked. And then, as a bonus action, um, we wanna, um, uh, kind of, like, dash backwards behind everyone. All right. Anything else? Uh, no, we can move forward. All right. Uh, next up is Leah. Kira, you're on deck. Um. So first things first. Morgan is going to cast Globe of In Invulnerability at eighth level. And that takes up that spell slot. Um, and then, so anybody else who is within 10 feet of her, um, gets, uh, basically any magic that's cast at them is, let me see. Any spell of fifth level or lower cast from outside the barrier can't affect creatures or objects within it, even if the spell is cast is cast using a higher level spell slot. Uh, such a spell can target creatures and objects within the barrier, but the spell has no effect on them. Similarly, the area within the barrier is excluded from the area affected by such a spell. So basically, um yeah any any spell that's fifth level or lower if it's something like even like sleep it's not going to affect morgan or anybody who's within 10 feet okay which is pretty much all of you because you're all like in a tight grit and tight knit group um is that all no then i am actually also going to for the time being, I am going to get my, um, oh, where did you go? Um, I'm going to get my Staff of Thunder and Lightning ready to go if I need to attack at all. All right. And no. That's it? Yep. All right. 
Uh, all right. Kira, you're up. Liam, you're on deck. Okay. Um, I guess I'll do this to the goddess. I am going to cast Moonbeam. Moon um, it is in a five foot radius, 40 feet high cylinder on a center point with uh, within range until this spell ends. Dim light fills it. Um, I need her to make a constitution save and throw, even though she probably will. Um, it is a... The DC is 15. DC is 15. All right. Ooh. Um, she rolled a 13. <laughs> okay. Damn. Okay. So that's 2d10 damage. Oh. She takes 14 damage. All right, 14 damage it and, is. And hang on. Um, the creature that enters a spell's area for the first time or on its turn starts starts there is engulfed in ghostly flames that cause searing pain, and they must make a constitution saving throw. Damage, obviously. Um, a shape changer makes it a saving throw with disadvantage. If it fails, it is also uh, engulfed, instantly reverted to its original form. It cannot assume a different form until it leaves the spell's light. Okay, yeah, so that's it. All right. That's all for your turn? Yep. Oh, uh, I'm going to fly up into the air about like. Maybe 10 feet. All right. Liam, uh, top of the round. Liam, you're up. Carly, you're on deck. Yes, sir. Oh, shit. I almost want to try seduction again. <laughs> um, nah, actually, yeah. No, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try one more time. <laughs> See what happens. Okay. How are you doing this? I think I'm gonna sing a song this time. Okay. Um, are you like how exactly are you doing this? Are you gonna be just singing? Are you gonna be playing an instrument? Like how are you doing um, this? I I think I have an instrument, don't I? Hang on. Uh. Sorry, I hope you do. Supplies. Tune. I actually don't think I have a. I don't have a uh, instrument. Well, damn. I was gonna say if you succeed on this, you will be like Arya, a legendary hero. Just saying. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna have to be a cappella. Just, just just Bren busts out the slam poetry. Yeah. <laughs> you walk around this city and then you're feeling shitty. Oh. Uh, <laughs> is, is that the seduction? <laughs> no, no, no. That was, that was slam poetry. <laughs> slam poetry seduction. You walk into the city feeling shitty. And then I <laughs> up and make you feel pretty. Oh! <laughs> yeah, but um, I do. I feel like Sokka <laughs> Yes. I like it was pretty. Um, yeah, so I guess I sing a song. Uh, she's got a smile that it seems to me. You gonna make me sing the whole thing, or is that enough? Well, actually, no, and you'll be thankful that I don't make you sing this, because, Bren, I would like you to make a constitution saving throw. Constitution saving throw. Uh, I okay. want to hear all three minutes of the song. Yeah. <laughs> I want you to sing November Rain. Add plus five. Oh, uh, well, seven. So oh, plus God. plus five from Faldron, so that's twelve. No, no, uh, no, that's seven. I rolled a two. Oh. Oh God, damn. Oh, buddy. Oh no. I'm gonna have to get you new dice. Bren. Well, I'm doing the I'm doing the D and D Beyond dice, but you know. Uh, Bren, as you are about as you are about to sing, the goddess just kind of like glares her green eyes right at you, and she just kind of tilts her head for a moment as she seems to be looking specifically at your throat. At that moment, as you're about to sing, you're like, ha, 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 and you feel and you feel like 
just a constant exhale as the air is quite literally being pulled out of your lungs. You, um, I honestly don't know what class classification that would be, but you take you take 13 points of of suffocation damage. Wow. All right. Well, I'm, da cool? I'm down wait, to wait, seven points, so physical? I don't think I'm making it out of this one, guys. Oh, what the fuck? So. How do you know hit points? Oh. Did you take your long rest? Yeah, I did. Who, like, wait, who's, who's okay. I got 33 hit points, remember? How is that possible? Yeah. We're level 15. Oh, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> God damn it. Wait, what level are you? I'm level 10 still, I guess. Oh, okay, rewind. Rewind. Everybody stop what you're doing. <laughs> okay, hold on. Right. Hold well, on. I fixed it. I fixed it to 17 now. So. Okay. Are we, uh, are we level 17? No, we're level 15. 15. You're all 15ers. 15. Okay. Jeez. What? Sorry, I didn't get that memo. I'm sorry. That was the memo at the start of Team Alpha. Have you always been level 10? Have you always been level 10? Yes, I've always been level 10. I thought we were supposed to be level 10. Oh, oh no. Oh no. What a game oh, changer. No. Yeah. But if you've been I'm able just... to survive this long just as a level 10, that's actually that actually is kind of amazing. Yeah. What, what, what was it? You were like one level behind everyone else for like a whole storyline? I was five levels behind everyone else, apparently. <laughs> no, 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 in normal <laughs> Song of the Wilds, yeah, not Team Alpha. The, oh, no, 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 no. I, I, uh, no, no, there was Polo should be the right level yeah. in that yeah, one. Yeah, I, know, I know, but I, re I recall one time you guys leveled up and like you were like, like two or three. Yeah, yeah you're, you're like I, one or two levels behind everyone. It was just like, oh, well, well that's, that's even more impressive. Yeah. But okay, I'm level I'm level 15 now, so I've got 47 hit points left. Okay. So that 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 sounds and way what's better. What's your AC also? Although I missed out on having a plus one in my Constitution saving throw, but oh well, that's on me, I guess. So what's your new AC? Um, my AC is still 11. Jesus, buddy. Oh, bard. I got something to help you out with that. Then stay yeah. close. <laughs> All right. Is that all for your turn? Because that was just uh, like one action to seduce. You still have your movement and your bonus action. I think at this point I'm going to need to use Vampiric Touch. Because <laughs> clearly, clearly I think that's going to need to be something. Um, so the touch of your shadow wreathed hand can siphon life force from others to heal your wounds. Make a melee spell, spell attack against a creature within your reach. Uh, on a hit, the target takes 3d6 uh, necrotic damage. I said neurotic damage. Uh, <laughs> and you regain hit points equal to half the amount of necrotic damage dealt. Until the spell ends, you can uh, make the attack again on each of your turns as an action. Alright. Um, so, I guess I tried to stab uh, Beastmaster with my rapier and try to use Vampiric Touch that way. Does that oh, work? Alright, so we're gonna say for this that you use half your movement to get up to Beastmaster. Um, so yeah, uh, roll to attack. Okay. Just a d20, right? Uh, yes. Okay. To hit, yeah. That is a one. Oh no! Oh god! Like like an actual natural one, or just yeah. it be? Uh, oh, a natural one, yes. <laughs> you couldn't let me seduce her, could you? <laughs> Carly, what are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> Bren. As you as you go to try and charge at the Beastmaster, you step on a landmine. And... <laughs> <laughs> but your leg, ah, it's caught in a bear trap. Yeah. <laughs> all of a all of a sudden, you realize the goddess put claymores all over yeah. the field. <laughs> and that's actually flowers. They're flower claymores, like. Out naturally flowery claymores. She shrivels your manhood to a worthless husk. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh 
no, 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 no. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, a, a tree root, like, pops out of the ground and catches your foot. Oh, that's great. Um, you still have half your movement. You can use the rest of it to get back up again if you want. But then your turn's going to be over. I guess I'll have to do that. All right. Although I don't know if that's a smart decision at this point. So. <laughs> All right. Carly, is it, it is your turn. Josh, you're on deck. Um, you know what? Fuck it. I was going to try and play nice. I was going to try and play nice. But she sees this happen to Brian. And she's like, hey! <laughs> and she gets the god's attention. And then she pulls out her thorn whip. And I'm gonna roll for damage. Nobody hurts Press our playboy. Oh, look at that! I got a 29. Does that hit? Is that nat 20? Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, that definitely hits, and any damage you deal is doubled. Cool. I don't like seeing my teammates being hurt. So that's 54 points of damage. Who are you attacking again? The goddess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, Carly. Or Inanna, in an epic moment that is reminiscent of <laughs> Trevor Belmont, you take, you take your thorny rose whip, and you slash morning, it. Ar- morning star. Morning star. Yeah. You take your thorny morning star. And you whip it around until it looks like it is just a storm of vines of just pure sharpness. And then this wave of whip just assaults the goddess. She doesn't even move. She just, like, stands there and takes it. Um, clearly, clearly it did seem to affect her physical form, but she herself is still standing tall, and if anything, she just looks more angered by this. Um, but the goddess does take 54 points of damage. Brent's still on the ground going, I could have given you a much more pleasing option, but you went with this. I... (laughs) You could have had this! You could have had this! Instead, she has this. (laughs) I'm gonna use my bonus action, which is part of my race, called Hidden Step. Um, I turn invisible until my next turn. Interesting. Okay. All right. Is that all? Mm-hmm. That is it. All I right. Just, I vanished, kind of like in Harry Potter. I was just like, pop, and where'd she go? <laughs> all right. It is now Josh's turn, and the goddess is on deck. All right. Beastmaster. <clears throat> Sorry. Beastmaster looks to the goddess and goes, Who do you want me to attack next, my lord? Go for the metal one. Falderon. She's talking about Falderon. I'm double checking. I'm trying to remember all the places right now. Go for the metal it's, been, one. it's been a few months. Right. It has been a few months. Wow. Go for yeah. the metal one. Go for the metal uh, one. That right. one. Go for that one. So, <laughs> with, with that, um, he then closes the distance quickly between himself and Falderon and swings his great axe at Falderon. Um, let's see here. And uh, what is your... What's your AC there, Falderon? Falderon. Falderon. <laughs> Jordan. <Hello>. Whoops, 22. <laughs> All right. Guys, All right. Just, leave, just leave yourselves unmuted. Well, I, got, I, right. I might have to, to leave after the game due to a little family issue, so I was talking to her about that. Oh, oh. understandable. Nothing terrible, nothing terrible, but... All right, so the first swing does miss but the second swing hits okay okay um and then so with that um, 
plus four. So that's 24 damage, but then I need you to roll a wisdom saving throw. Nice. Uh, and you gotta beat 20. Ability <clears throat> save. Wisdom save? Yes. 20 even. 20 even. All right. So he makes the so he makes the DC. Yes, he does make the DC. And just double checking here because I've never used this before. And because you know sometimes those effects like they do half damage or something yep. like that occurs. Yeah. I'm just I'm just double checking here. Uh, da -da. All right. So you since you met you met it you beat it so you don't take the infectious fury um psychic damage but you, but you do take the the 24, 24 slashing okay. damage yeah um i do and... have a side question though yeah for you or or evan mm -hmm. um your your race class whatever you are wouldn't be considered Aberration, celestial, elemental, fae, or a fiend? Would you? If you're talking about the goddess, she, she would be celestial, wouldn't she? She, the closest thing she is would be celestial, but that does not mean that she herself actually is like what you would call a celestial. Um, it all kind of depends on what you have planned, though. Um, so because of like my paladin, it says. If I'm if I'm being attacked by a creature that is an aberration, celestial, elemental, fey, fiend, or undead, they have disadvantage on attack attack rolls against me. So I was curious where they would fit in. Oh well, well you see, it was not the goddess that was attacking you. It was Beastmaster, and Beastmasters yeah, Beastmasters none of those things. So he's yeah. not like fey or anything then. No. No. Okay. But keep that in mind for the goddess. If that applies to your character as well, I guess. Alright. And so with that, I did my two actions. And um, how far away is the goddess from from Valderon there? Yeah. Uh, the goddess is like a good 20 feet. Okay, so, at t so I have 40 speed. So I did a 20 feet to him, and then I'll use the rest of my speed to get back to be right next to the goddess. All right. And you guys I'll, are just... And, and I'll end my turn. You guys are just playing with Final Fantasy logic. You, like, move forward, do your move, move back. Well, he, he's very... He very much does whatever the goddess wishes him. Spider does. Do I get attack he, he, opportunity, he, though, he, 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 he has his... He has her sword. Beastmaster's a simp. Yes. Had a so since he backs out of range, do I get an attack of opportunity then? Um. He didn't disengage technically. That actually is a good question. Yeah, that's a good question. I haven't really thought about that before. He does, he's not a rogue. He doesn't have the technical disengage. You can make an opportunity attack when a hostile creature that you can see moves out of your reach. To make the opportunity attack, you can use your reaction to make one melee attack against the provoking creature. The attack occurs right before the creature leaves your reach. You know, in this case, I would actually have to say yes. Because he is mm -hmm. moving outside of your range when he was originally in your range, then yes, you would get an attack of opportunity, so go for it. I will roll... Let me get the weapon page. Here we go. Uh, um, I don't think a 16 is going to hit. 16, nope. yay, nay. Nay. Okay. Nay, it does not hit. <clears throat> well, then that ends that for me. Am I on deck then? No, it's Goddess next. Yeah, the <laughs> Goddess is next. All right. Hang on. She has to make a con. Constitution save through. All right, what's the DC? 15 still. 15 Constitution. Yep. That is a... It's a 17. Okay, so 
she takes half damage. So. All right. See, she just looks like she takes it. Half of 11. She takes it. All right. The goddess then looks at all of you with just a stern look of hatred. And then she slowly raises her arms into the air. And then she looks towards her sword. You might want to get onto the tree. <laughs> and you see Beastmaster just cling onto the tree like a raccoon. And at that moment, the goddess like raises her staff and slams it down into the ground. I need everyone to make acrobatic saving throws. Oh, no. I'm except for, except for Aurora, who's flying. I'm flying. <laughs> oh, I, I haven't forgotten you. What is it? Is that okay. dexterity? I was gonna say, Morgan yes. also has Oof. ways. So you said, hold on, sorry. Do you have a plus yeah. acrobatic saving? Acrobatic saving throw. Oh, I got a four. Wait, Luana <laughs> has a question. Wait, Izzy has a question. Izzy, what is your question? Okay, I have a question. Um, because my mage hand is still floating near her, I would want, as I see her lifting her staff up, I would want my mage hand to try to pull the staff in the opposite direction from the ground. Uh, okay, because you're going up against a goddess, and because you're not actually using your arm, you're using a spell, you can do a strength check, but you are going to be at disadvantage. Okay, okay. But you said dex uh, acrobatics is dexterity, correct? Yes, an acrobatic saving throw. Which, Luana, even if this does work, you s you'll you still have to do. Okay. Okay, well, my die rolled, my even with disadvantage, it was a 17. Unfortunately, that does not be enough. Mm. Um, I'm loving that Skyrim oh my. music right now. <laughs> uh, Liam, what was your what was your saving throw? Eleven. All right. Uh, Morgan. Eight. Uh, f for Falderon. Seventeen. Inanna. I got a four. And, <laughs> and, oh, oh, oh my heart. <laughs> and and Luana. Twenty six. Okay, Luana is the only one who saved here. Because as soon as the staff touches down on the ground, you feel the ground beneath your feet rumble, and you just see shik as countless spear spikes of wood just shoot out of the ground, Mortal Kombat style. And all of you take... All, all of you take 12 points of slashing damage, but Luana, because she saved, she only takes 6 points of slashing damage. Um, um, you can see me now, by the way. That's right, she's invisible. Yeah. She was oh, yeah. invisible. Invisible. At that moment, the goddess just kind of looks at Inanna and just goes, <laughs> You actually think that could have worked? Oh, no. And then she looks, and then she, is it, where the fuck was that fairy? <laughs> I'm gonna turn you into blue raspberry jam. <laughs> um, at that moment, the goddess then lifts her gaze and looks at the tiny little fluttering form of Aura. Hi. No. And then she just goes, "You didn't think I forgot about you, did you?" And then she, and then the staff returns to her hand and she points the head of it right at Aura, and you see what looks like a small little swirling cyclone of those slashing leaves again. Uh, Aura, I need you to make an athletics saving throw. So, because I rolled an 11, I still took damage? You still took damage, and because you took, you didn't make the DC, you take the full damage. If you met the DC, you would have only taken half damage. Okay. Um... Liam, are, are you are you okay? I'm at 35 out of 93 hit points. That's okay. That's you know what? That's better than when you only had 11. Um, <laughs> I got 14. 14. 
Unfortunately, that's not enough. Aura, you feel yourself being consumed by this small cyclone. And you can feel, like, what happened to Luana, the same slashing and tearing leaves that are just cutting up your small body. At that moment, the goddess keeps her staff pointed at you, kind of raises it up a bit, and then slams it down to the ground as you are then returned back down to the ground itself. You take... You take 16 points of bludgeoning damage. I'm good. I'm good, I'm good. And unfortunately, because you did not make the DC, you are going, you are now, from now on, going to have to make strength checks if you want to try and fly back up to the air. Because you look at your wing and there's a tear in it. Harley's expressions right now. <laughs> baby! <laughs> um, that is it for the goddess's turn. It is now Jordan's turn. Izzy, you're on deck. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna try to Alright, well, action wise. Uh, ooh, actually, can I do that? For my action, I will... Ooh, hang on, sorry. I'm gonna run up to the, to the goddess and take two swings with my longsword. And before I do that, as a bonus action, can I chuck Liam's character... A health potion. Uh, for something like just tossing a health potion to someone, yeah, you can definitely use that as a bonus action. Alright, so for a bonus action, I'm gonna throw Liam's character. I've got... So you get a potion of greater healing. It's 44 plus 4 hit points. Ooh! Uh, do I need to roll to be... drink it? Nah! To make sure I cast nah. it? Okay. So 44 healing, that's 44 what I do? 44 plus 4. Yeah. So 48. Okay. No. No. 44. So 4d4 plus 4. Okay, so you roll 4d4s and then add 4. Yes. There we go. Okay. All right. I was going to say, I was off. It sounds like 4t4. Yeah, we got that. All right. So 14 altogether. All right, got it. Not as much as I wanted, but that's fine. Okay. I still appreciate it. It'll, it'll keep you up for a little bit longer. All right, uh, yeah. I'll make two. I'll make two swings against the uh, goddess with my longsword. Uh, however, I'm gonna dump some of the magic from my longsword into my AC before I do that. Oh. Eight, uh, does does eighteen hit the goddess? Eighteen, unfortunately, does not hit the goddess. Okay, we'll roll again. 13 plus... Well, 22. 22 just makes it. Holy crap, thank God. All right. Um, so I will dump a smite into this as well. Spells. All right, I'll do a second level spell slot. And then I have to go back and make sure I know how that works again. All right, so smite. So that's 1d8, 2d8. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Where'd it go? 1d8, so that's 4d8. So one, two, So, 19 points of slashing damage. No, that's... Yeah, well... So, technically, it would be... Okay, so it would be... 
it'd be eight, it'd be eight slashing damage, and then nine, like, holy force magic damage, whatever. All right. And then that, that will be my turn. All right. So how 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 much damage total is that? Total was it was nineteen. I may have fudged the math like on what was what, but it was nineteen total. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, and that's the end of your turn. Yeah. Bonus action and action. We're good. All right, Izzy, you're up. Leah, you're on deck. Okay. So I would like to first um distract her. Anyone else hear that? I heard it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would like to distract her with my mage hand and just start pulling at a, they're like closing on the shoulder as if someone's pulling here. Like, hey, hey you, hey. And, um. <laughs> as, you, as you do that, the goddess actually just kind of like she does feel it she just kind of looks over at the mage hand for a moment and then you see something that shouldn't really be possible she reaches over and she grabs the mage hand with her other hand hmm. oh, yeah. she just slow she just slowly brings it over she just slowly brings it over and she crushes it into a bunch of little purpley sparkles and then she just does this. And by the way, this was my all-time favorite moment in Star Wars The Last Jedi. But Persera does this. <laughs> okay. Well, what I was going to try to do is, while she was dealing with that, was to shoot my short bow at her. All right, roll to attack. I have, a, I have a 28. Yes. 28, 20, 28 connects. Fantastic. Here, I'm going to... And give her some damage. Let me get three other... Oh, that's a lot of dice. Wait a second. Okay, well, let's add this together. Give me one moment. Oh, I did that backwards. Hold on. I only needed one die. Oh my god, that's stupid. There we go. Uh, that is going to be. That is going to be nine points of damage. All right. Anything else? Um, no, I'm still where I am. All right. Leah, you're up. Kira, you're on deck. Yep. Yes. So, quick question. Who has the lowest AC in our group? That would probably be me. Probably. Probably. Okay. So, first things first, uh, Morgan is going to just let her wings out. And then she is going to, because I think... Bren moved away from her to go over to Beastmaster, right? And he never, did, or did he move back? I don't think he moved back. Okay. No, Falderon's still there. I'm next to the goddess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Falderon's next yeah. to the goddess, but Bren moved over to where Beastmaster had been. <clears throat> yeah, Bren is so still face down in the ground. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not, I'm not actually. I did use my... Oh right, you did get up. You did get up. Never mind. I, I did that. I did this because it was funny. Yeah. Not because it was uh, actually what happened. Uh, so okay. So Morgan's gonna move over to Bren and put her hand on his shoulder and just be like, "I'm gonna help you out a little bit here." And she is gonna cast Stone Skin on him. Morgan. Uh, and that's at fourth level. So. This spell turns the flesh of a willing creature you touch as hard as stone until the spell ends. The target has resistance to non-magical 
bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. How much again? Uh, that's that. It doesn't do any healing, but it makes you resistant to non-magic bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. Okay. You take half damage from all those kind of attacks. Yeah. And then I think Beastmaster was up in a tree, right? Yeah, he's still clinging to that tree. Yeah. I am going to use my bonus action. I can I can do a cantrip with my bonus action, right? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna use my bonus action to use Thunderclap towards Beastmaster. Um, so Beastmaster has to make a constitution saving throw of 16. All right, let me see here. Do, 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 do. Constitution saving throw? Yes. And actually, Sorry, everybody within a hundred feet of me has to make a constitution saving throw. Damn it, Leah! Okay. Constitution 30, saving throw. Thirty-one, babe. Thirty-one. That's okay. I have another one for you that you did not do so well against. Oh, last twenty-eight. Time. Thank God. I got an eleven. <laughs> there, 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 there might be there might be some changes. Oh, what's the DC, Leah? Fifteen. I got an eleven. Uh, <laughs> Leah, how much? How much did you hurt me? All right, more than you already do. <laughs> right. Oh. Love. <laughs> it's 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 ten. Oh, not like terrible. I, I will take that. I thought that was. <laughs> So anybody who got less than 16 on their constitution saving throw got 10 damage. And Are we all supposed sorry. to do a constitution saving throw there, or...? Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. Although you're within 10 feet of me, so... Should I still do one? Would that work? Would, would he be okay since I he's within you... 10 feet of me in the... What, 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 what does the cantrip say, specifically? That one. Well, the cantrip is that they take, um, if they don't succeed a constitution saving throw of 16, then they oh, take... I, I was, I meant, I meant, sorry, like, I meant for, like, where does it say its area is? 100 okay. feet. So if he's, if it's, he, if he's within that 100 feet, he still takes the damage. She, she give it and she take it away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's unfortunate. I healed you. <laughs> that I hurt. Unfortunately, you. I do not. I just made sure you wouldn't get hurt by anything that you know physically. Thrown it's at one. You. It's one of those things. I think with those spe- kind of spells, it's like even to the person's like right next to you, like it's if they're within that range, it still does it. All right, and now I'm good. Where I am. All right, so uh, Kira, you're up. Liam, you're on deck. Um, I am going to use Ice Storm. Uh, it is range is a three. I put it three hundred feet away from me, or and it's twenty feet, twenty foot radius, and then forty feet high cylindrical. I mean, I'm putting it also on the goddess, so she needs to make a deck saving throw. It's still 15. I need to also be open. Oh yeah, you're on top of her. Mm. Do you, I need to do that right now? Yeah. Dexterity saving throw. All right. 18. So you're, you will be taking half. Ah! That's a nat one. <laughs> Roll damage! <laughs> Fuck you. Okay, so it's going to be 2d8 bludgeoning. God damn. Um, so that right there is 15. Okay. Then half of 15. So I take 7? Yep. And then I also have 4d6 cold damage. Bro, I swear to God. 
Uh, six. Eleven. Eleven uh, cold damage for her. Like Twelve then, total. Yeah. God so. damn. I've taken more damage from you guys than from that Now you know how I feel. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Uh, and that will be my turn. All right. We are now back at the top of the round. Liam, you're up. Carly, you're on deck. I think I'm going to try to do another vampiric touch with my rapier. All okay. right. Roll to attack. Uh, okay. Good, I'm good. Do I still have the plus five or not? Uh, because, uh, that, you get that plus five from being close enough to Falderon, right? I think if so. If, me. If, if that's the case, then yes, you would still get it because you both are within melee range of the goddess and Beastmaster. So that would be a 13. Wait, is that an attack roll, or... You would get advantage if we're flanking. Are they flanking? No, I think that's up to you, Dion. If um, or not. Now, in this case, no. They saw you coming. Okay. So, that would be a 13, then. Doesn't hit. Alright. How about a li Who wants some bardic inspiration? Even though I've been hitting... Sing to everybody! <laughs> uh... <laughs> Who wants another love poem? <laughs> All the poems. Who needs it? Since some goddesses don't seem to appreciate my perfect poetry. I mean, I'm not. poetry. <laughs> so, like, I could use the inspiration. <laughs> but I, I've been, I've been doing pretty good with my rules, so. Well, you know what? Falderon has been helping me it, as best as he can, even though it's not really doing anything for me. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna let him have some. You wanna you wanna love poem Falderon, oh. my mechanical mate? Hit me with your best shot. <laughs> Let's try you there for. All right. Oh, uh, this is a little long, but not too long. I'll try to get through it fast. He's <laughs> serenading me in the middle of this battle. Yeah. Yep. You are like me. You will die too, but not today. You, incommensurate, therefore the hours shine. If I say to you, to you I say, you have not been. Set it to music, or broadcast it live on the ghost radio. <laughs> May never be an oil painting, or old master's charcoal sketch. You are a coordinates of person, number, voice, and place. Strawberries spread through your name, as if it were budding shrubs. How you remind me of some spring. The water is as cool and clear. Late rain, rain clings to your leaves, shaken by light wind. I'm going to leave it there. Because <laughs> it goes on a little long. All right, Falderon, take your inspiration. And in a is completely that, platonic way, my mechanical Is that mate. a D10 and D8? Uh... Uh, okay. D12? D12, one D12. All right. God damn, nice. One bro, it's a bromance. Bromance. <laughs> My orc brethren is no longer here, so I must find another brother. Oh, so. From another mother. Yeah. Alrighty. Evan. Yes? Oh, my bad. Liam. Yes? Are you, are you done? Yeah, no, I, I finished. Yeah. All right. Evan did. Evan did ask. So I was. Oh, like, okay. Ask, yeah. I, <laughs> all right. I, I I guess I just assumed everybody was like, oh, he's done. I don't know why I did that. I'm sorry. No, uh, no, no, no. You're totally fine. I was just like, I don't want to go until I know for sure. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Carly, you're up. Josh, you're on deck. That all was right. my. That was my crescendo. Since it worked so well last time, I'm gonna look at Beastmaster and I'm gonna say, You! You're next! And I just take my sword with. <laughs> hey, Beast, Beastmaster just looks like is on the tree, looks back, and just goes. <laughs> oh, oh, you're on the tree! I'm that, on the tree! That actually changes things. I'm well, not not really. really. He's only like no. one foot off the ground. He's just okay. clinging on to the I tree. Have a cooler, I have a cooler option I can do. Um, 
I'm gonna use poison spray. Josh, you have to make a constitution saving throw of 17, my friend. Awesome. I think that's one of my best saving throws. It is. Damn. Actually, it is my best saving throw. <laughs> Dude! 23. Fuck! <laughs> yeah. I, have a plus, I have a plus 13 to my constitution saving throws. I'll remember that next time. <laughs> Dude! The next time I use it on you. All right. Um, well, shit. That was my plan. All right. <laughs> so, um, ha. Huh. I am going to then use my bonus action and hold on. And I am going to throw a stone at him. <laughs> in, in hopes to accomplish what? <laughs> I don't know. Piss me off? Because <laughs> um, you're next. <laughs> uh, 24, does that hit? 24 does hit, yes. Okay, cool. So that oh. was nine points of bludgeoning damage. Oh, cool. I get nine points, and that's I've actually resisted to that. So that's like, what? Four or five Four. damage? Yeah, <laughs> the, only, the only way this caused damage is if it hit you directly <laughs> in the eye. <laughs> I was about to say, I'm like... I wanted to at least do something! <laughs> <laughs> so, so you, so you throw the rock at me, right? And it, like, it just does the dink, and then it goes down, and Beastmaster is just like... Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> it just glares, he's just... Wait, wait, he nodded, just goes, um... I mean, I wanted to do something. <laughs> <laughs> You're about to get something in return. <laughs> All right. Is, Carly, is that the end of your turn? Yeah, that's the end of my turn. Honey. All right. Josh, you're up, and the goddess is up on deck. All right. So Beastmaster gets dinked from that, and he just looks, sees the dink, and then looks at the goddess and goes, Mistress, may I kill her? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she just kind of looks at you, looks back at Anana, looks back at you, and just goes. <laughs> and with that, he just like steps down from <laughs> from the tree. And he, at this point, he's like eight feet tall, so oh he is God. just towering. Anana, I would just like to point out, you are like perfectly dick height with this guy. <laughs> and he just. He takes his he takes his great axe and just goes He just flips it to the side and he is just gonna wind it up like this and just go straight down kinda of like a hammer like motion to like hammer you down into the ground like a Those who live by the Lord will <laughs> die by the Lord. <laughs> and that is a Nat 20 DM. <laughs> oh! Okay. Uh, roll bludgeoning damage and then double it. Oh god! <laughs> Rude. I was really hoping this would end with me seducing the goddess, but I, I, that's not happening. That's, that's, that's 54 damage. Oh no! And I, and I need you. And I need you to. Um, I really should have given roll, you a bardic inspiration. Roll for wisdom, wisdom saving throw. You need to. Be, you need to beat. Right. You need to beat a twenty. It's just, this goes on. This is actually. I got a twenty. Okay, nice. That's good. Nice. That's nice. I'm rolling for my second attack. I hate you. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> what's your What's your ace? What's your DC again? DC? Yeah, your AC. I should say. Oh, my AC is okay, 11. Okay, so, so this one does work. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, that is 22 damage, and I need you to do a wisdom saving throw again. Well, I'm dead. Oh, you got what? me. Really? <laughs> yeah. So, so with that Beastmaster, actually, like, with two whacks like that, she is actually, like, in the ground with her head just sit, like, just sitting, like, just above the ground. It's just like there's like eyes roll in the back of her head, and he just he just rolls his shoulders. <laughs> Manslaughter! And, and, and just looks and looks to the goddess and goes, 
That feels good. Did I do good, mommy? <laughs> <laughs> um, he's like that. He's like that's a nice warm up. Who's next? <laughs> uh, I I will just say this for the purposes of this session. Um, Carly, do not roll your death saving throws. We're we're just gonna leave you alone here. All right, guys. Well, I'm gonna go get some water. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Not your fault. <laughs> I antagonized him. I mean, we all kind of figured this is probably where the episode was going anyway, so. I oh. just didn't realize I'd be that quick. <laughs> yeah. All right. I mean, we have been playing for over an hour. So... Yeah. Yeah, we, we, still, we still got a bit to go through here, so, but don't worry, we'll end this, we'll end this on a concluded note. Um, alright, so Josh, that's the end of your turn? Yeah, only good. Alright. Yeah. Alright, it is this now is really the guys that, This is oh. the first time a character has actually died. Oh, okay. no, thank you sad. for the cupcake. Well, I mean, besides... That's Sterling. not gonna bring your character back. <laughs> I was getting a cookie. I just wanted to fucking give you something to eat. Thank you. You're fucking Do welcome. <laughs> uh, Alright, so it is now the guy... Yes, Kira. Is she still in the bubble? Yes. Okay. Con throw. Fifteen. Uh, that's a nineteen. Okay, half damage. All right. All right, the goddess... Half of six. All right, half of six. Gotcha. All right, so the goddess looks down at the beaten form of Adonana, and then she just looks at the rest of you and just goes, Take a moment to look. This is what we'll be expecting all of your kind. And at that moment, she then raises her staff, but she holds it like horizontally above her head and now and then all of a sudden the giant tree in the center of the clearing starts to slowly rise through the ground some more until its very roots just start popping out of the ground into what looks like many wooden tentacles and all of these tentacles come this going, Evan? <laughs> something I should have done long ago oh, my. oh goodness those tentacles now all whack towards you. I need you all to make acrobatic saving throws once again. Everyone. Except except Carly. Right. By the way, all, shouldn't we all be mourning Inanna's death right now? Or is that she, She's not dead. She's unconscious. Oh, okay. But for the purposes of this session, I'm not having her do her death saving throws. We will, You will all find out why at the end of the session. Finally, my orc skills come into play. Thank you. I just get to relax and enjoy the show now. What is the point of being a smexy orc, like orc, orc bard, orc. if orc, like? Orc. It's like the elf, the orc. No. Yeah. 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 Hey, you guys like the poetry, so. <laughs> Okay, so acrobatics saving throws. Bren, what did you roll? Hello? Bren, it should not require that much typing. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I didn't hear my name. Okay, uh, 25. I got a 25. 25. All right. Leah, did, Leah, did you roll a four? I have disadvantage because I have armor on. Oh no! Aura, what did you roll? I got a six. F Faldron, what did you roll? A twelve. Luana, what did you roll? Twenty-two. Oh wait, I am my bard inspiration. Oh yeah, shit! Yeah, you forgot about that. Why are you? Pro That's not twenty. It's a D twelve. Uh, eighteen. All right. So out of all of you. Bren and Luana are the only ones who actually evaded all the damage to this attack. Morgan, Aura, and Falderon, you all suffer. You all suffer 18 points of bludgeoning damage. I'm still good. <laughs> How are you still good? You're baby. 
because I had 108 hit points. How? You're a baby! I, have 90 I took a now. Oh, tough. Yep. Good. <laughs> Don't shake the baby. I mean, I'm still good. I got 92 hit points. All right. Next up is Jordan. Uh, Izzy, you're on deck. Final Fantasy. I'm sorry. Can I interject for just one second? Because when Liam just said "Don't shake the baby," it made me immediately think the team four stars. Don't shake the baby. <laughs> well, that's from that's from Cooking Mama, is what I was referencing. Oh. So that's God. what they were referencing too. So. I'm gonna dump 50 hit points into myself and cast Sanctuary on Carly's lifeless, unconscious body. Alright. So, um, as far as the spell goes, by casting Sanctuary, ba ba bum, uh, nice you sanctuary. ward a creature within range against attack. Any creature who targets the warded creature with an attack or harmful spell must first make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, the creature chooses a new target. Um, if the warded, so yeah, because that's pretty much it. Um, so Carly's character pretty much can't get attacked without whoever attacks her making a saving throw. And I dumped 50 hit points into myself and. No one would attack me. I'm well, you're dead. unconscious. They can't, like, kill you, kill you. <laughs> Hopefully. You're only oh. mostly dead. They're not going to make you all dead. <laughs> you're unconscious dead. So, yeah, that'll be, uh... That'll be it for my turn at the moment. All right. Then next up is Izzy. Leah, you're on deck. As I was saying before, mm. I take my short bow because I'm really confused on what else she can do right now, and she just starts shooting it. <laughs> okay, well, roll to attack, and who are you attacking? Beastmaster. She's oh, annoyed at the shit. All right. Forget the goddess. Let's go for this other one. Um, and that would be a twenty-three. All right, I am going to do my a reaction, and it is for since I'm in my beast form. If a creature you see within ten feet of you hits you with an attack roll, you can use reaction to swipe your tail and roll a d8, applying the bonus to your AC to the number roll, potentially causing the attack to disappear. Well, am I within ten feet? If you, what, what are you attacking me with? What? With a with a short bow. Oh, short they're... bow. Right, they were all right, right. Yeah. How how far are they? From? Uh, twenty uh twenty feet. Okay, so then, uh, yeah, no, I can't do that. Then, yeah, go for a hit. Go ahead and hit me with your, with your short bow. I hit you. I hit you with nine points of piercing damage. Alright, so I am taking four damage because I am resistant to it. <coughs> How dare you be resistant? Not a lot. Not a lot. <laughs> um. Okay. Then, uh, then Luana notices it's not a huge effect on Beastmaster, but then this was an eyebrow with a smirk, and that is the end of your turn. All right. Uh, Leah, you're up. Kira, you're on deck. Alright. So, first things first. I would like to use... Where did it go? That was right there. It's in this... Aha! There we go. Um. So... Morgan's gonna use Synaptic Static... Uh, and Beastmaster and 
the goddess are next to each other. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. I'm uh, gonna use synaptic static, so they have to make an intelligence saving throw of sixteen. Wait, so what am I rolling for again? Sorry, intelligence. I had... Intelli 16 for intelligence. Alright, so that was... Um... Oh! Just short of it. This is a 15. I just made it. And I have oh, a plus zero. You are so <laughs> lucky. So, um, the goddess takes 29 points of damage. Oh. And... Uh, this is and uh, psychic damage, and she is also uh, she for the next minute she has to. Let me pull this up. Uh, for the next one minute, she has to make she has to roll a d6 and subtract that number from all attack rolls, ability checks, as well as Constitution saving throws. Uh, to maintain concentration. Uh, you can, however, at the end of each of her turns, try to roll um, to beat the 16 intelligence again. All right. Beastmaster takes half damage. So 29, so 15 damage. And I am resistance to that. So 15 for damage from spells. Cool. So, let's... Yeah. Why does this sound like the beef commercial music? <laughs> it kind of does. It went from Skyrim to that. <laughs> it's, it's what's for dinner. Um, and then, since I didn't actually move to make that, you know, spell. Um, Morgan is now actually going to fly over to Beastmaster, and if I can do this in one move with a move and a bonus action, she is going to grab me, Beastmaster, and fly up into the air. Would that be one move, or would that be two? Because if I can use the bonus action as well, if that's not counted in that, then she'll also use Shocking Grasp. Okay, so for something like this, you can use... Because you're, there's not a lot of distance between you and Beastmaster, uh, we'll say for this that uh, you can use half your movement to run up to him you are going to have to spend your bonus action to essentially grapple him. And then you can use your next, the last half of your bonus, uh, the last half of your movement to fly up into the air. But then your turn is going to be over. Dang, okay. So then I will not pull him into the air, but I will still use the shocking grass. All right. So for that, I'm guessing not 18. Does that hit? No, I didn't think so. And, Dang. And, yeah. No. All right. Is that the end of your turn? Yeah. All right. I uh, you stick your tongue at me. Uh, Kira, you're up. Liam, you're on deck. Again, so deck 15, please. All right, uh, 18. Okay, so she'll take half. Uh, first 2d8, 16. Uh, half of 14, so seven. Oh, no. oh wait, did you minus the d6 from your save throw, Evan? Oh. So then it does work. Okay, so then she takes full four, she takes 14. She, yeah, she takes full 14 and then 
12 uh, cold damage. Alright. Alright, anything else? Uh, and no, because we can't do a, uh, another action. Alright. <laughs> Alright, uh, Liam, you're up, and then Josh, you're on deck. Okay. I'm going to take one of those, one of the pieces of paper that has the poems that I read on it, because that is something we established in this fight. And I am going to write on the piece of paper, illusionary script. Okay. And with the, in hopes of doing what? Um, writing an illusion that will trick at least the Beastmaster. We're just try it. No, do that. Uh, because I'm trying to get creative here, and I don't really see anything <laughs> else. Uh, for illusionary script, you write on parchment paper or some other suitable writing material and imbue it with potent illusion that lasts for the duration. To you and any creatures you designate when you cast the spell, the writing appears normal, written in your hand and conveys whatever meaning you intend when you wrote the text. To all others, the writing appears as if it were written in an unknown or magical script that is unintelligible. Alternatively, you can cause the writing to appear uh, to be an entirely different uh, message, written in a uh, different hand and language, though the language must be one you know. Should the spell be dispelled, the original script and illusion both disappear. A creature with true sight can read the hidden message. All right, so what illusion are you making? Um, that th me and the rest of the team are dead. All right. Um, <laughs> All right, so with this one, I would have to say, um, roll me a deception check, but because you're l using illusory script, I will give you advantage. All right. That's... All right. 21? Not bad. Uh, uh, that is definitely not bad. So for a moment, uh, Beastmaster... All of a sudden, you just kind of blink your eyes, and you just see dead bodies. I see dead people. <laughs> I see dead people. All the time. That's funny, because I was just watching a clip of Haley Joe Osmond. Anyway. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's really funny, because one of them is not an illusion. <laughs> but can you guess? <laughs> not dead. Not dead. Josh, it's fine. Fuck you, Nord. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Bard. <laughs> you already gone, though. No, this is birthed up a 4-4. I guess we'll take this chance with anything we can. Uh, 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 who wants some bardic inspiration? Anybody. Anybody. Luana, you want some? <laughs> Alright, you want a poem? <laughs> More poems. <laughs> Alright. I found me. my thing. Great. Uh... Morgan's just like, I don't know that that's entirely appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> Simplicity, say sleep. Or shall we shower? Have an apple. You are as I need water. Shall I move? Do you dream? Shallow snow. Flesh, melt this. Tom Pickard, Valentine. <laughs> uh, Luana responds with, bro, bro, bro. I've, I've, I've heard better, but you know what? You know what? I'll take it. Inspired that you tried. You tried. That's all that matters. <laughs> all right. Anything else? No, that'll do it. Great. All right. So I can have it sitting next to me. All right then, uh, Josh, you're on deck. What would I need to do to see past this illusion? Uh, roll me a wisdom check. A wisdom check? Yes. <clears throat> that would be 14. Unfortunately, that is not enough. You still just see a lot of dead bodies. So I see all these dead bodies, and I'm just thinking, as Pacemaster does, he would just be like, Hey, dead bodies. Hey, goddess. 
can I chop up the dead bodies and start making some dinner? <laughs> She's just like dead bodies. Mommy, sorry, mommy, sorry, mommy. <laughs> uh, the goddess just kind of looks at you and goes, "What do you mean dead bodies? They're standing right there." Oh, so they're actually here? Cool. I just saw I just saw the the weird small one that likes to say poetry, write something, and then all of a sudden they all seem to be dead. Small one. <laughs> the dude. Okay, Beastmaster at this point is eight foot and like four hundred pounds of pure muscle. He everyone is pretty much small to him. <laughs> um. So unfortunately, Beastmaster, because you did not make the the this the check that time, you yeah. still you still just see a lot of dead bodies. I know that's what I said. He's he just as his personality, he would see the dead bodies and want to start making dinner. The bodies being the dinner. <laughs> that's why I asked you asked the god god is that because he would still want to slash and attack them even though they're dead. Okay, but the god but then the goddess just tried to explain to you like they're not dead. I know, which is why I said that which is why I am explaining that. That this first action is their conversation. <laughs> so her her telling him that they're not dead, he would still want to attack them. Yeah, but yeah, is but he can't see them. He just sees dead bodies. He can't actually is he is he still convinced that they're dead bodies, or is he listening to the goddess? He's listening the, to the goddess. The he, goddess is gonna yeah. have to tell him, no, he's over there, idiot. Yeah, he's listening to listening to the goddess. He he will do whatever the goddess says. <laughs> okay, the goddess, in a bout of frustration, just goes, okay, just go twenty paces forward and then five paces to the right, and then just swing down. Morgan's just like, um... Four, four o'clock. No, now five o'clock. <laughs> Mor Morgan's still just... holding on to him, so he's just moving with Morgan hanging on to him. <laughs> would, he be able, would he be able to feel that? I guess. Like, she's literally on it. Um, roll me a perception check. <laughs> oh, perfect. Actually, I think I've really good this I do, actually. Uh, oh. 26. Perception. Yeah, you I know she's there. I have, I have advantage on my perception check. That's what I was asking. Yeah, you, you know oh. she's there. Alright, and so... Can I... Can I take her with one hand and just swing her at whoever the goddess told it her him to attack because he you cut out for me like oh. the internet glitch and I didn't hear who you said to him. Okay, so you grab Morgan by the by basically the wrist and you're gonna beat a motherfucker with another motherfucker. Yeah. And with the directions that she gave you, she is going to make you attack Aura. Okay. All right. What do I? Uh, what do I roll for this? Do you I know, this because this is not a normal anything? because this is not a normal weapon. Just give me a straight attack roll. Okay. Oh. That's a nineteen. Yep. All right, so roll damage. Roll, uh... <laughs> do, do I need to roll straight to see how well I throw... You I know what, yeah, roll... Give me, give me a strength <laughs> check, and then that will be the damage. Okay. I can... That, that's, that's fine. I just keep hearing the Halo theme. <laughs> That's a nat 20 plus 5. Somebody out there watching 25. That, I have a challenge That's a nat 20 plus 5. That's 25. Oh. Morgan and Aura, you both suffer 25 points of bludgeoning damage. Not the baby. 
So basically, did I just Hulk? Let's like, go. Hulk, Hulk Loki, like you Hulk Loki Morgan <laughs> onto the baby. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. All right, is that the what? Inanna has a question? Yes, Inanna. I would like to extend a challenge out there for anybody watching this. I wish for you to make a Renaissance version of I Want It That Way by the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> or, or eBay by what, Weird, Weird Al Yankovic. What, 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 kind of, what kind of race is Morgan again? <laughs> Morgan. Okay, so as he does this, like he takes her by the wrist and just swings her and just bam, 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 bam. Like Morgan into Aura and like let's go. And this goes, puny Asamar. <laughs> and just like walks back to the goddess and just. Goes, the, goddess, like, the goddess gives you a little head pat. <laughs> the, like she has to reach up and just kiss the head pat. And, and the Beastmaster just goes, This is a confusing moment. <laughs> Fuck you, Nord. And you're confusing ass. Like, We're creation. getting our ass handed to us by a simp. <laughs> I All really right. Need, I really need a picture of of uh, Beastmaster doing that to doing the fuck you board. All right. It is now the goddess's turn. Jordan, you're on deck. Gotcha. All right. Yes, I know. I know. <laughs> hey, every little bit helps. Yes. Yes, it does. So you're saying don't forget the minus the d6. <laughs> so then that's a twelve. I would just like to point. I would just like to point out, any time the goddess has received damage, the wear and tear does show on her clothes, quote unquote. But she herself looks completely unharmed. So we're just tearing off her clothes, is what you're saying. I was gonna say, so that 54 points of damage I did earlier did nothing. You don't know that. Am I a it's, joke we're, to This you? is just the fan service episode at this point, is what you're. <laughs> Am you're I a fucking joke to you? Carly, calm down, or I will mute you. You're supposed to be dead. Damn. I mean, you're a joke to the goddess, but not to us. To us, you're a valuable member of the society. Ah. Oh. <laughs> All right. The goddess then glares at all of you and just simply goes, I am getting tired of this. You're and then you. Tired of this. And then she slowly, like, hovers just a couple inches off of the ground and she starts to just slowly back away, her back getting closer to the giant tree in the middle of the clearing. Opportunity attack since I'm next to her? You can certainly try. Damn straight I'm gonna try. I'll fail, but I'll try. Would my poetry help Natural at all? Natural 20, check it, Kira. Go right ahead. That is a 20. I can dump a smite into this, too. So, I'm gonna pop a level 3 smite into this attack roll. So, that is... I'm terrible at this. Alright, so that's 1d8. 1d8. 2d8. 3d8. By the way, you guys can still hear the background music, right? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> okay, calculator. Why were you. Beast Wars Megatron, or whatever. Because that's the only Megatron that, that should be a thing, not the weird, raspy one in Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom that they gave us. One more? One more? Like, they, they completely changed the voice cast of all the Beast Wars characters, oh, and it shit. made me so angry. I liked, I liked Prime. I liked how Frank Welker did the Megatron voice in Prime. Oh! Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. But they got new voice cast who were not the original Beast Wars actors for Transformers Kingdom. So mm. instead, that, that Beast Wars Megatron sounded like, It is you! He sounded...
kind of surfer like. 54 points of radiant damage and 7 slashing damage. Yeesh. So at this point, her clothes are just gone. Uh, yeah. it, it is now a leaf kini on her. It's the Adam and Eve. <laughs> For some reason, Brian just has a camera and he goes, click. No. And by the way, he I was. And over and he's like, nice. So. <laughs> Beastmaster just kind of looks at Brandon and just kind of signs like, email these to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, by the way, and I'm not sure if this matters, but like, Persera's body dimensions is very much uh, Lady Domitrisk. I figured, yes. I figured that's that where you... more than anything in this entire <laughs> Uh, oh, Persera is what you get if you combine Lady Domatrisk with Keyleth. Who? Uh, the Marisha Ray's druid character from the first Critical Role campaign. Oh, okay. That's like my right. ideal woman. <laughs> I know, Carly. You may not like it, but this is the ideal. <laughs> you may not agree with it, but this is the peak performance form. I don't. I don't make the rules. All right, uh, or but if that's the case, just gives her a robe and just like, um, you, you might want to cover your your um. <laughs> At that moment, the the goddess is still backing up to the tree, and she does nothing this turn. Uh, Jordan, it is now your turn. Izzy, you're on deck. I, well, I mean, I did the attack. Oh no, it is my turn. Because yeah, now it's your actual turn. Oh no, shit. Um. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, All right. Well, I guess I guess is the next target, so I'm gonna I'm gonna roll up on that guy. Let's well, you don't want to run a lawnmower over that leaf bikini. <laughs> no. All right. That's not my dice box. I'm, I'm moving it closer because I need to use it. Does a 22 hit? Uh, 22... Okay, yeah. Beastmaster. Yeah. Alrighty. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Yeah, but what about the Death Stalker? Give me... Hey, hey, I, what, what kind of attack are you using? Uh, magic longsword with a smite dumped into it. Okay, so are you within 10 feet? I would assume I am if I have to slash, yes. Okay, then I'm gonna use my form of the beast tail reaction. So I roll a d8 and apply that to my AC, and if it is above, if if that added, then the attack misses. Oh, I, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. I've just never used it before, so. That adds plus four, so that makes, yeah, so then the attack does miss. And I guess my tail, I guess my beast tail blocks that attack from hitting. Okay. Uh, I do the second attack again. Uh, does a 21 hit? <clears throat> um, let's see. Let's see. Let me roll this. Um, yes, it does. All right, all right. So we got six, six, six. So you get 13 slashing damage reduced to half, I'm sure. <laughs> and then I get to add another 2d8. Actually, 3d8. So one. 11. And then 17 points of radiant damage. Okay. And I don't know what I have for a bonus action. Nothing I can use. So uh yeah, we'll call that we'll call that my turn. Perfect. Perfect. All right, that's it. Okie doke. Yep. Uh, all right, Izzy, it's your turn. Leah, you're on deck. Wonderful. I hope you're ready for this. 
I hope you are. Da, 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 da. Because, can you guess what she's about to do? Can you guess it? No. Actually, no. <laughs> she takes her short bow. And eats jam. <laughs> she takes the short bow, just takes the bow itself. No, no. No, I'm kidding. Um, she takes the short bow. She takes the short bus. She Sorry. takes the short bus and aims it at, um, Beastmaster. Um, aims it right at the shoulder and is wanting to jam it into the arm. That is the goal. Okay, so we got a 19. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good, bro. You, you got very close. It is like barely misses. Oh, geez. do I at least give a paper cut? No. You, you, oh, no, <laughs> no. Oh, like, like, like you flick, you flick a couple hairs, and he's it's like, is there, is there, is there, is there a bug around here? What's, what's going on? Well, that's that's fine. Because out of um, frustration, as a bonus action, um, Luana uses telekinetic shove. Um, <laughs> um, and so uh, I would like you to um, fail a strength uh, saving throw, uh, Mr. Beastmaster. What do I, I have like to beat? Not... I, I, no, no, no. <laughs> what do you have to fail? You have to fail, uh, 17. <laughs> I rolled a 17 plus 12. Oh my god! Uh... <laughs> ah! Strength See, at cost. this point, I've kind of, <laughs> I've kind of accepted our fate at the end of all this, so... Oh, I know what's gonna happen at the end. I just want to give him a hell of a fight until we get there. Strength don't, don't and... accept your fate. Hello? Well, fine. She uses telekinetic shove, and just you just feel wind past your ear, and you're like, "What was that?" <laughs> it just dries off all the sweat that he's been building up on his fur, and he's just like, <laughs> "Hobbyoing it in the air." A bird flies into his face. <laughs> um, yum, 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 yum. He just eats the bird. Oh God. I'm telling. <laughs> for for just a brief moment, you see the goddess like, <laughs> <laughs> and and Vsauce is like, what laws of nature? Uh, the, the the alpha the alpha beast eats the, the lesser one. And the beastmaster dies of a disease the bird was carrying, and we win. <laughs> Salmonella. Salmonella. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this burps. Burp. Beak flies out. All right, so Izzy, are you done? <laughs> All right, Leah, you're up. Kira, you're on deck. Yep. All right. So I don't know if this will work, but my fingers are crossed. Um, what I'm gonna do is Morgan is going to cast Mental Prison. She is going to aim it toward Beastmaster. But then I'm also going to spend six sorcerer points to also send that spell at the goddess as well. You both need to make a 16 intelligence saving throw. All right. Rolled a 12. Damn. Rolled an 18. Dang, all right, so Beastmaster basically is surrounded in this illusion of danger. And uh, kind of in in my mind, it's just gonna make me laugh because I just imagine like Mama Beastmaster is pissed off and yelling at Beastmaster for something because Clean your room. he did something stupid. And now he's like, she's holding a slipper in her hand and he's just like, Oh, yeah. But he can't back up anywhere because there's like this deep, dark chasm behind him, and he gets like all around and basically in every direction except for in front of him where Mama Beastmaster is. I'm trying to he remember. Cannot move. Outside story. of the illusion, he can't move. 
he can't talk, he can't hear anything outside of the illusion. Um, Mama Beastmaster has la chancla. <laughs> Beastmaster's just yelling, but mom, it's all fucking Nord's fault. It's just all Nord's fault. Everything is Nord's fault, not me, <laughs> not the goddess, Nord. Uh. <laughs> he's just, that's, that's all he's doing. He's just explaining to Mama Beastmaster how it's all Nord's fault. Beastmaster also takes 28 points of damage. Damn. And that's psychic damage. And then, if he is moved out of the illusion or physically tries to break out of the illusion area, he has to take 10 d10 damage god damn how 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 um how big is the area just it's so it's know. your immediate area so i'm a, like okay. we'll, we'll just say like a five foot area around because okay. right. it doesn't give a specific area um, did, 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 didn't you have another concentration spell going on prior to that yeah, one so that broke the stone skin on brun okay um and then well, I don't want to see if this would work but I doubt it I'm not going to try it because I don't want to try to you know attack the goddess and completely miss on the attack so Morgan is basically just going to have her wings unfurled and be ready to fly when any physical attack comes her way and I will hold that all That's right. It. That's it? All right. Kara, you're up. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to do the one thing that I'm going to do any damage. I'm going to... Can you speak up a bit? We can't really hear you. I'm using Cure, cure Wounds at third level on myself. So... Healed 19, and unfortunately, that is my turn. All right. Throughout this entire fight, the goddess, again, like I stated before, the goddess looks like she's never really been getting hurt by any of your attacks. Beastmaster's been the only one that's been showing any clear evidence of wounds this entire time, but the goddess, aside from just wear and tear on her clothes and her staff, She's just been looking generally untouched. Actually, they haven't done enough damage Wait, to her. Hold on, where'd Carly go? Physical. I don't know. Wait, hold on. Is this a thing? Is this a thing? No, I'm right here. I'm sorry. No, oh. it's just here. I just turned Evan. off my... No, Evan, come back! Carly's back. We need there. you for this episode. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't... I... I'm back. I, I thought this was like a bit. No. Nope. Like. <laughs> Carly was gonna be covered in blood. Yeah. I was dozing off, off, so I had to I had to get up and walk around for a little bit. I, I I genuinely thought this was like some big like elaborate thing that Evan no. was trying to do. But... Nope. Sorry, guys. All right. So, all this time the goddess has been showing no real evidence of wounds this entire time, and her last move she just started floating close to the tree and just like raising her arms and she looks like she's been glowing brighter and brighter and brighter it's at that moment that she finally lowers her head and she looks at everyone and i'm super excited because i finally get to bring back this music Not okay. With her. some of you may recognize this as the very first music when you first met the goddess. No. Nine Inch Nails. The goddess lowers her gaze upon all of you, and then she slams down on the ground, slowly walking towards all of you. At that moment, Everyone, you are all completely ensnared in vines. 
that just shoot out of the ground and just encase you. She looks at each of you one at a time. Her first gaze goes to Morgan. You. With your wings, you have shown to be quite swift. Very swift indeed. I've changed my mind about you. Uh, and I've changed my mind about all of you. I think I can actually find a purpose. And for someone as swift as you, she then gently waves your hand, her hand, and Morgan, you find yourself completely consumed in like a tornado. Like your vision is completely obscured in a tornado. She then slowly, like, walks over, and then she looks at you, Luana. And she goes, You are a very slippery one. Always thinking up sneaky little slippery ways to try to catch our eyes or to misdirect us in such a random assortment, like the tides of the ocean. She then waves her hand, and Luana, you are encased in a bubble. Like a bubble of pure water. She then walks over to you, Falderon. No. <laughs> for a being as unnatural as you. Ouch. What you have been made of shall now return to the very earth from whence it came. She waves her hand, and Faldron, you find your body to slowly be completely encased in brown and black stone. I she that, on the ground before I get locked up. What? I spit on the ground before I get encased. Uh, you're, you're trapped. You're like encased in vines. And then yeah, she, he, 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 was say, he was saying he spit on the ground. So oh, I, spit on the ground. I couldn't yeah. hear that. Sorry. Yeah. Let me lower the music a bit. And then she whips her head to bread. And then there's you. Oh, <laughs> I, shit. Death by Snoo Snoo. <laughs> I must say, your passion and your drive to try to do your weirdling wildling things that's what I did best it certainly <laughs> she then still bonks trying. you on He's still trying. she bonks you on the head with her staff <laughs> your baiting rituals are weird for, su for one of such but curious <laughs> my mama warned me about women like you I was hoping she was right <laughs> She then looks at you and goes, For one with such an intense, fiery passion as yours, I will definitely have use for you. She waves her hand, and Bren, you find your body to be completely consumed in flames. Alright. As you are all completely consumed by earth, wind, Water and fire, and I fucking swear, if any of you say heart, I'm banning you from this campaign. Well, I was gonna say, do you remember? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think of that one. You're... The the vines slowly retract from your bodies, releasing your forms, and she just simply goes, "It is finally good to see you all once again." my elementals. Okay, but what about... What about... Yeah, what I'm about not done yet. I am not done yet. Hi. God damn. <laughs> the goddess says, I am not done yet. <laughs> Hold your horses. At that moment, the goddess then slowly turns around. Now then, for the two abominations who would steal my essence, she then looks around and... Aura and Inanna 
are not there anymore. Oh. No. Ola, Anana, you find yourselves... Anana, you're still unconscious, and Anana, Ola, you're the only one to really witness this, but it was all just so very fast while the goddess and Beastmaster had their back turned. You just remember... You just remember a blaze of white light and a sudden chill. And you finally see, and you feel yourself with the wind blowing through your hair. In fact, over your entire body. Or you look up and you see yourself in the clutches of a massive silver dragon. Inanna is also being held in the other claws of the silver dragon. Okay. Okay. I, was I gonna, think I know where this am is going. I, am I getting a... How do I want to word this? A bad feeling from the silver dragon? Or is it very, like... Do, I already know who this is. Uh, You get a sense that this whoever this entity is is good. Okay. However, at that very moment, you feel something tug at you. Like, it seems to tug at your very soul. Aura, you look up, and you see what looks like a wave of green energy that geysers out of the center of that forest. Mm -hmm. And it just spreads out and starts consuming the land. It goes over the forest, the fields, the mountains, the oceans, the deserts. It goes over everything. And Aura, the last thing you remember is looking down, is, lo is looking up before your vision goes blurry and then goes dark. And the dragon looks down at you and goes, Don't worry. We'll try to figure out how to fix this. Years pass. The war is still going on. The goddess, Beastmaster, and her elementals still ransack civilization. And ever since that one fateful day, there have been reports everywhere of all druids just over the course of a few minutes completely losing all of their powers and many of them becoming comatose. Many years pass once again and the war is still going on. Until a one airship goes to a certain outpost in the middle of a certain woods where we see a group of people that eventually become Group D arrive and that is where we end the session oh shit so oh. essentially team alpha has been the elementals this whole time and you saw the elementals before right spoilers it's not spoilers if it happened true <laughs> but like to the characters it would be spoilers sorry I wasn't much help y'all I wasn't much help either, to be honest. I'm I'm honestly surprised that the the dragonborn was getting any damage. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for watching this, and I hope you enjoy our next playtime, which will be the which will be Carly's debut as a dungeon master. With that said, we will see you all later, and we will let you know when the next session is. So say goodbye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.